Hello there, I'm the student and this is another video on my channel and today I wanted to talk about, as you can see in the background, uh, Gotland and the possibilities that the monarchy Gotland has actually. And I want to talk uh, specifically about the mechanic uh, to, yeah, to inherit Denmark via a mission and via an event basically and what you can do with that uh, instead of just inheriting uh, Denmark. And uh, yeah, you'll notice that uh, if you see it in the background that uh, I have actually done a normal uh, casual Gotland monarchy game, uh, getting the alliance with the, um, or rather the support of the Holy Roman Empire and uh, of Poland and Burgundy uh, to call them in into the war against Denmark, which I easily won. And yeah, I PU'd Denmark, I PU'd Sweden uh, as they broke free afterwards. And then um, you notice that I didn't click the decision or the mission rather to, uh, to inherit Denmark right away, even though I did it around uh, yeah the late 1450s. Uh, I uh, waited with that, and the reason why is, as you can see over there, I conquered uh, Bremen and I conquered Hamburg, as you saw right now, and I am going to t uh, conquer um, Lübeck uh, in a few seconds. And uh, yeah, you're going to see where I end up after this uh, time lapse. But uh, obviously you notice that the uh, Gotland is uh, way stronger if, if, if it inherits uh, Denmark. But what I want to show you is that you can actually do something before you inherit Denmark. And uh, in this case I conquered all of the Hanseatic cities, including Lübeck itself. I defended from uh, Austria, as they obviously uh, desired uh, Schleswig-Holstein, from the uh, event of the support that they gave earlier to me. And uh, yeah, I conquered all of those uh, three cities and then I uh, prepared myself to form another nation before I inherited Denmark. And this nation is actually going to be the Hanseatic League. And you're going to see now where I end up after the time lapse is done. Okay, so as you can see here I am in the year 1474 and I am obviously playing as a Gotland still. And as you saw in the time lapse and as I uh, told you in uh, the comment, I, uh, yeah, I, s I actually conquered uh, all of those uh, three cities of uh, Bremen and Hamburg and uh, Lübeck over here. And those are obviously all the Hanseatic cities and if you're wondering, no, I don't have uh, like coalition problems. Those nations are all lower Saxon culture, that is uh, why they, uh, they hate me so much. But as you can see, 38 on Saxony and so on is not really a problem. Um, but yeah, obviously it took me like uh, like uh, 15 years to do that um, in, instead of just inheriting uh, Denmark right away. But uh, as you notice, I have a decision over here which is declare the Hanseatic League. And I'm not really sure if uh, yeah if um, a lot of people know, but uh, with the latest patch of uh, 1.34. You can actually form the Hanseatic League. Everyone can do. Uh, you just need to be, as it says over here, um, you just have to own all of those uh, three cities that I conquered. Lübeck uh, is not allowed to exist. Um, and uh, yeah, you need to be, um, what it doesn't say is, you need to be Germanic culture or you need to be one of the casual uh, Hanseatic cities in the Eastern Baltic, so Gotland, Danzig or Riga can do that uh, without being Germanic culture, obviously Riga and Danzig are, but uh, Gotland isn't and as Gotland I can do it over here. And uh, yeah, the biggest problem to do that is that you need to be a republic, you need to, or you need to have 40% uh, mercantilism, as you can see I have only 26, or you need to have the burgers on 90% uh, influence, and that is actually a thing that I uh, did. 
actually I have 100% influence over here because I got an event, but uh, yeah, um, it doesn't really matter as the loyalty is extremely high anyway, so yeah. I can uh, form the Hanseatic League right now and obviously I get uh, new traditions and ambitions and I'm going to take the ideas, you're going to see them uh, yeah, right away uh, after I click that, but before I do that I obviously have to fulfill the Gotland mission tree and uh, therefore clicking that mission over here, back in control. Um, as you notice I have uh, actually all of those uh, Kalmar Union nations as uh, subjects, actually got the Burgundian inheritance as well, as I was allied to Burgundy from the beginning of the game while uh, they were a rival to Denmark. And uh, yeah, I actually can click this mission now. I clicked all of the other miss missions before as well, except uh, this obviously as <laughs> Uh, they have way too many, uh, much influence, the burgers. But uh, yeah, I'm going to just uh, click that mission right now. And you'll notice that I get a event. I don't inherit Denmark right away. I, get, I just get an event. Which uh, says obviously that I'm going to inherit Denmark, I become Denmark and I become Danish primary culture. Which uh, obviously if I click that, I won't be able to form the uh, Hanseatic League anymore because I wouldn't be Gotland and I would be Danish. But uh, yeah, as this is an event, you don't have to click it right away. You can just click that uh, decision first. And that's exactly what I'm going to do now. As you can see, I have the flag of uh, Lübeck over here, but the name is the Hanseatic League. And I'm going to take the uh, new ideas, obviously. If you have a look at the uh, Godlander ideas over here, uh, you notice they are pretty good for the core creation costs, obviously, but they are not like uh, yeah end end game for for the uh, trade. But if I change to the Hanseatic League ones, yeah, you notice uh, that is another thing I'm going to talk about. But yeah, you notice I took the other ideas and uh, if uh, we have a look on them right now, you notice they are actually insanely strong for a trade empire, which I'm going to try to, to create in this campaign. Uh, but yeah, ha just have a look at those ideas. 20% uh, uh, trade efficiency from the beginning of the game and a merchant from the beginning of the game. Actually, you see I have uh, two merchants available. Trade power plus 15%. Uh, ship cost minus 5%, ship trade power plus 25%, really nice for a trading nation. 5% discipline, even some stuff for the uh, for the army and even er uh, pretty early for the first idea group already. Uh, yeah, heavy ship combat ability, uh, goods produce plus 10% and death cost. Uh, idea cost minus 10% and provincial trade power modifier at plus 20% which means that my provinces will be basically so much more worth it than all the other nations provinces are. And on top of that uh, as an ambition 20% uh, trade uh, steering which is actually one of the most important modifiers if you have a lot of trading nodes uh, that you control which I uh, yeah, which I plan to do uh, and I'm going to increase my trade income with that uh, even higher. But, uh, yeah, as you can see I'm the Hanseatic League now and even though you remember I chose the monarchy Gotland path, uh, as you can see with this event over here, I can become the leader of the Kalmar Union. Uh, even though I'm basically a monarchy, I'm uh, now a plutocracy because the formation of uh, that decision for the Hanseatic League makes you a plutocracy if you do it as a monarchy or something. Um, so you notice that I'm a plutocracy, basically a plut plutocracy Gotland with the uh, monarchy Gotland mission tree. And uh, as I already clicked that event, I can now, uh, yeah, I can obviously um, do those uh, things first, so uh, political dynasties and um, sortation as I have a pretty nice uh, ruler over here which is going to rule even longer right now. And yeah, as I did that right now, I can click that event now. And as you can see, I inherited the, th uh, the <laughs> throne of uh, Denmark 
which uh, means that I've become Denmark right now through the event, obviously, and the name says it, I'm still the Hanseatic League, obviously, I'm going bankrupt because uh, I have bigger loans and so on, but yeah, I have the Danish mission tree over here and I am still a plutocracy. And not even that, I still got the Kalmar Union over here as the tier 4, even though it is obviously not available for a republic. But uh, yeah, this bug is obviously real on this, uh, on this page. And uh, theoretically I could even take the ratify the Kama Union thing if I had uh, no rebel armies, which I'm obviously going to uh, take right now. And then I'm going to be the ratified Kama Union instead of that. Yeah, sadly I uh, tested it actually in a non-Iron Man game and this uh, event, or this, uh, it uh, doesn't really matter that much uh, to, to take to take this mission over here obviously because um, even though I will be getting the uh, further missions which is not really needed because I don't want to form uh, Scandinavia um, yeah I'm going to lose uh, this reform over here as soon as I pick another one over here for the Republican which I obviously want to do uh, let alone for uh, this one over here for another global uh, trade power modifier but uh, yeah, I'm obviously not going to take the new mission, uh, no, new ideas, which means that I'm having still the Hanseatic uh, God tier trade missions. And this is not the ideas Lübeck starts with. This is the upgraded uh, version of the ideas that, uh, that Lübeck gets if they complete their mission tree, which I got in the year 1474, as you can see over here. And uh, even though I am a plutocracy, and even though I am uh, uh, having the Hanseatic ideas over here, I do still have the Danish missions as I theoretically am Denmark, even though the name says Hanseatic League, which means that I can take all of those missions right now, including those two, which give me the event of uh, the, those three choices where I can choose between uh, giving Norway and Sweden, in this case Norway, giving them something to make them more loyal, um, keeping the situation at, as it is, or exploiting Norway, uh, which means that I get uh, a crazy modifier of 25% goods produced until I integrate Norway, which I um, you guessed it, never going to do in this campaign. Uh, the bad thing about this is that he's going to be a historical rival after that, but you'll notice if I, even if I do that now and it gets 15% uh, uh, less nobility influence as well, so even if I do that right now on both of them, giving 10% from uh, Sweden as you can see, I exploited both of them, and even though I did that, they are at 0% Liberty Desire, which is because I obviously got those crazy event modifiers from the Gotland mission tree earlier, and they are going to be active until I am so strong that they never are going to uprise ever again, basically. So yeah, you notice that this uh, exploiting their, those subjects is not a problem at all and yeah, Burgundy is going to be loyal very soon after I stated up all of that. And yeah, I'm going to obviously uh, click all of those uh, missions again. This mission I'm going to probably click uh, later as it gives uh, the uh, Monarch two millipoints, which I don't need right now as I have uh, six already. But uh, yeah, obviously those uh, Monarch points are really nice to have and same goes for the English missions and I'm going to also do the uh, Hanseatic missions. As you can see I have completed, um, I've completed both of them which are giving me crazy amount of modifiers for the trade, even trade income over here as you can see. And yeah, I'm going to be basically uh, super powerful. Um, and way more powerful than I would be if I inherited Denmark right away without doing that uh, Hanseatic League uh, stuff. So what do you think about this mechanic and uh, what do you think about this, uh, yeah, this tactic as Scotland? 
just uh, leave it in the comments if you if you want to and i'm going to upload a uh, yeah a video update series basically on uh, how this campaign uh, goes and i'm going to probably do the next one around uh, 1500 1520 maybe and we'll see where i am uh, uh, where i'm ending up uh, at this stage and i'm going to make a new video where i am at this point and uh, yeah so just uh, like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and we're going to see in the next video